What are we doing today? Today, this weekend, today is Friday. I took today off, so it's gonna be a three-day weekend. Uh, we're gonna get started on some things. I don't know what he's doing. Hang on just a second. I gotta chew blue out and put him inside. How's that? Anyways, so like I was saying, a three-day weekend. We're going to get started on some stuff, okay? Let's see if I can break this down. First off, I need to clean up the shop. The shipping container has a lot of stuff, as you saw in there, motors. Uh, I got the motor out of this, tore it down. So I've got this block I'm going to do something with later. That'll be a project. Hey, Dad, is this the edge to your... Oh, that was bad. Yeah. Let's then we. Can I see if I can wrap it? Yeah. Good luck. I can barely pick it up. Ta Which brings us to what? All right. Get out of here. Go. Go. Transmission. There's the intake. There's the uh, head. And it's messy. And I need to go through and clean it up. I'm gonna probably take the beer fridge and put it over there somewhere so I can put the air compressor over here. Redo things. I am not gonna have room for a motor in here at its current state with what we've got. So we need to do some organization. And while we're at it, we're gonna talk about this situation here. We are in the mud and we are in the dirt. I don't have a nice concrete driveway or garage. All right, so I did some figuring on some numbers here. Let me look this up. Right quick, okay. We took out a KA24E motor. A KA24E motor weighs 371 pounds. That's without the transmission. We're probably going to put a 5.3 LS motor in here, which weighs roughly 460 pounds. The transmission, the 4L60E, that's a, I don't know which transmission I'm going to use yet. That's one of the ones we could use, weighs. 133 pounds without transmission fluid okay transmission I can move around on my own probably hey, worst case scenario you get two people to help move uh, it but before you do it look it's my old friend to the I'll put it back. okay so but a motor and a the motor that came out of here was a beast it was heavy enough for me just to do it by myself, dragging it across the mud. Uh, the new motor is going to be 100 pounds more, so we've got to find a way to move this thing. So I went to Harbor Freight. So I went to Harbor Freight and bought a 1,000 pound engine stand. Let me show you these wheels. These little rinky dinky wheels, which are nice for concrete driveways and garages. We don't have a concrete garage. We have mud, some gravel, this thing here. So we've got to figure out how to maneuver this motor around. It's more than likely not going to be a one and done where I bring the motor over here, hook it up to the hoist, and get it into the truck all in one day. I'm probably going to be doing some working, and I'm going to need to move this motor around. Uh, i got to do motor mounts, so that'll be probably a one day project. Put the motor in there, figure out where the mounts are, weld it up, pull the motor out, put it back in the shipping container so it doesn't get ruined. So we got to move this thing around. 
So we are going to do some redneck engineering to get this motor around. All right, so here's the solution to our problem, I think, maybe. This is what we're gonna try to make the solution to. So I was gonna build a homemade welding cart with off-road tires. I never finished it yet. Uh, I've got a bottle, but it's empty. It costs money to fill bottles. So we're probably gonna set this bottle to the side and we are going to set up that engine stand, we're going to try to weld it, chop it up and weld it to this welding cart I was building. Pull those poles off and mount that engine stand to this off-road cart. But first, we have to clean out the shop. Dad's getting something. Are you gonna help or not? Where are we being at? Why are we being at? Need you to push. We're being at and All right, so this toolbox, somewhat bought on an impulse. Been thinking about, I've been thinking about buying a box. Um, this thing is looks larger in here than it did in the store. But we didn't have a toolbox in here. We needed one. I got bins full of hammers and such, and screwdrivers and wow. wrenches that need to be organized. Yeah. Could you show this now? So that's why we purchased this from Harbor Freight. Mm. I'm gonna get um for me now. Dad, get down for me. Pretty nice. We obviously got green. Don't get me the so why did we go green? That's pretty obvious. Got a green welder, matches our green welder, matches the number one gentleman's club. Green, green. See a theme going on here? Green. Got one more thing for you. Could you paint one more thing? All right, since we like green so much, I know that door's making this hard to see. We got a green paper towel holder. Sweet. Are you going to that All right, folks. This is the cleanest this shop's been in a good minute. We went through and organized it past couple days. Got this green box from Harbor Freight. Organized a bunch of our tools. We worked on the 
Komodo Junk Dragon. I got some more to do on it. I want to make some better claws. Now, let's get started on that engine stand. All right, here's what we're working with. So we chopped off that bottle holder portion. And I've got a quarter inch plate here at the bottom. That was what uh, was the bottom of the uh, bottle holder for the welder bottle. I'm gonna clean it up. All right, let's roll in here. Here is the Harbor Freight engine stand. Basically, the only part I really need is this. And this is the base plate that holds, that the motor mounts to with these doohickama jiggers. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to cut off this tab here. Cut this tab off. There's a little bolt holder here. I'm also going to chop that off. That looks like that's uh, what would originally hold the bolt in here. So we're not going to use that. We're going to chop that off flush. We're going to take this with our handy dandy MIG 170 from Harbor Freight as well. You catch the theme here, Harbor Freight, Harbor Freight. We're going to come back out here. We're going to weld that onto that and we'll probably take some of those other pieces and make us some angles just to make it even more secure to our off-road engine stand. Alright, so we got this cleaned up at the bottom. Now the original design, this original design this piece here would slide in here and there's a bolt that goes in the bottom. So for structural integrity, since this has a piece that goes in here on this sleeve, I took one of the extra ones, I'm going to clean it up and it's going to actually go through here. It's got a bolt hole on the bottom and I, well, I uh, drilled a hole through my base plate over there so I'm going to actually put a bolt through here too and then we're going to weld the full length of this on all four sides. This is going to get welded in first to this. Yeah my dad found it. Did not see that.
Hey, hey. What? have it internet Xander and I first off we cleaned the shop we went to Harbor Freight and bought a toolbox to organize the shop and then we chopped up our old bottle cart we were going to make for an off-road bottle cart and then we took this off this is the engine stand Pittsburgh engine stand from Harbor Freight we chopped it up cut it up made it to fit on our off-road cart so we can uh, change an engine out here in the dirt. I would, uh, I can't advise you to do this. It could be dangerous. Um, I probably won't get my warranty back from Harbor Freight for doing this. So do this at your own risk. Talk to the internet. Hi, internet. That is what, but that Jeep is what is behind you. But what is moving? <laughs> Anyways, hopefully next video we got a motor standing on this thing, getting ready to put it in Project Sin LS swap for the hard body. Thanks My for watching. Dad took some of the engines off of his car. Isn't that right, Dad? Yeah.